Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore the Universal 3D Head Realistic Human 100 pack. So this is an awesome collection of uh, various very realistic uh, textured heads. Um, you can see the website right here. I'm going to just go through a couple of them here. We have uh, young ones, we have medium uh, faces and old faces, all sorts of uh, variety as far as ethnicities and facial types go. And you can see all the morphs are completely different as well. So each face is completely unique and there's uh, basically a hundred of these. Um, you can see the middle-aged uh, males right here and also there's uh, older adults. Um, the older ones have a bit more uh, character to them. You can see the, the wrinkles and everything like that. And we'll talk about how to customize these uh, further on as well. Um, there's also uh, female ones. We go to like a middle-aged female for example. You can see the uh, beautiful female faces. We have all sorts of uh, varieties and ethnicities again right there. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, basically apply these, how to, uh, how to use them, and how to customize them even further. Uh, so basically, once you have this back, you'll have literally unlimited options as far as uh, character types. Now, one thing to keep in mind, just going through the website here, is that uh, the RL head, the format that these heads all come in, is compatible with iClone, Crazy Talk 8, and Character Creator. So you can click and drag and apply these in each one of those applications. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, how to change the head shape. We're going to talk about uh, modifying the textures and, uh, you know, morphing stuff, uh, changing the morph slightly. And then we'll uh, make it more of a tune type character as well. So let's just close this down for now. And I'm in iClone right here. Now you can see this beautiful, beautiful texturing on this character. Very realistic, uh, very well done. And if you want to find where your RL head stuff is, um, your pack is, I'm going to just close this down for now. Uh, you can go to your actor tab up here and under head you should find a folder called RL head and then you should find the realistic human 100 pack and the list of female and male heads right here. Now there's kind of a code for these. Um, you can see there's an M underscore M and that means the M means middle age. The second M means middle age. You'll see there's also an O like M O and that means the older and MY means the younger, and that's the same for the females as well. So if I take this, uh, let's find a female, an older female maybe, and try to click and drag her in. There you go, maybe someone like this. Um, all you need to do is click and drag it from your content manager, and it'll give you the option to import the morph. Uh, so the, each of these heads also contains morph data, like I mentioned before, and the texture. Uh, normally you'll want to choose head and body because it'll automatically uh, adapt the body's texture to the, uh, the shade of the head there as well. So once you click and drag that in, it should apply in just a moment. There you go. And then we have this, you know, fairly uh, elderly looking lady. And uh, keep in mind that these textures are from a website called 3D.sk. They've been adapted for use in iClone. And uh, they all contain, uh, you know, hair uh, hair texture as well on, on the top there as well. So if you if you don't want that, I'll show you how you can get rid of that kind of stuff um, in a moment. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start off with Character Creator. Um, in Character Creator, I've just loaded up this base mail project here. And what I'm going to do is there's no actual folder in Character Creator that you can apply these heads from. So what you need to do is go back into iClone here and select any one of the heads, right-click it, and then select find file and that should open up an explore window where you'll see all the various heads in the female gender right here you can also select uh, go back to your realistic human 100 folder and find all the male ones here and if you hold control and click and drag or control and scroll your mouse rather you can change the thumbnail size so you can get a more detailed uh, look and you can also apply these to your iclone uh, as well so let's say for example i want to apply this guy's face onto our character here. Keep in mind that this is only character creator compatible as well. So you have to have a character creator base such as Christian or uh, Natalie, I believe her name is. Yep, Natalie. Um, so under, under avatar, you'll find your character creator characters uh, right here, Christian and Natalie. So you'll only be able to apply from uh, those characters. You can see this dude looking pretty serious right here. Anyways, let's go into character creator. And what I'm going to do is find that explore folder again and we can apply, you know, any one of these heads the same way that we did in iClone, simply by clicking and dragging it from the Explore window. So let's try something like uh, like this older looking dude right here. Uh, we'll just click and drag his head onto our character. And you have the option again to import head morph, import the texture. And now this is important here, dynamic texture, uh, dynamic appearance texture setting. 
I'm going to select reset first. Uh, we don't have any basically uh, appearance editor stuff going on. So I'm just going to press reset first. And I'll show you why you may want to uh, keep uh, current uh, in just a moment in the next example here. All right, so you can see it applies that uh, head to our character. And if we wanted to get rid of this hair, for example, we can actually, you know, swap the hair out if we wanted to, you know, select uh, this hair uh, item over here. And now I've uh, basically, I have downloaded these party fun packs and the hottest hairstyles. You can uh, purchase these separately from the content store. Say, for example, we wanted to give him, you know, cool hair like this. We can do so. It's a pretty funky looking hairdo on this guy. But if you wanted to delete the hair altogether, you can just select the hair item right here and press delete. Now, this guy has, you know, some uh, some hair texture on, on his head, obviously, there. So say, for example, we wanted to get rid of that. Well, the easiest way to do that is you can actually go over here uh, in your appearance editor, activate the appearance editor right here, and you can get rid of a lot of the original texture um, on the hair. Uh, one way you can do this is by going over here. Now, originally what we'd be able to do is go into Sculpt and just select, you know, Sculpt, a different type of, uh, of hairstyle like this. But you can see that doesn't really look very, very nice. So we need to just keep it at none right now. And that's the uh, substance uh, texture on the scalp there. But if we go to, for example, now we go to Head Base, it's going to show us those uh, maps that we have uh, imported on our character. So the normal map, uh, you may want to get rid of the normal map. So we can just go from Custom to None, for example. And you can see that gets rid of a lot of the skin texture. Um, each one of these contains a, uh, whoops, we don't want to go back to custom. Each one of these uh, faces contains, or heads contains a custom normal map as well. So if you get rid of that, you'll get a result like this. Um, you can also get rid of the, you know, the light tone uh, on the character. And then you'll get a result like this. So that's really not something that we'd want. Um, you know, normally you'd want to obviously keep that sort of stuff. We can press Control-Z again to restore our normal map. However, there's kind of a workaround with this. What you can do is if we just went to uh, uh, our character again, uh, let's start a new project. Or we could have just loaded up that base mail project there, I guess. Um, but if we click and drag this uh, head in one more time, uh, let's wait till it's finished loading here first. And I'm just going to load in that base mail project instead. There you go. Now, uh, kind of a workaround here is you can just go ahead and delete this uh, current hair. And you can see he has that uh, sculpt that we mentioned earlier in the appearance editor. So we want to go up to actor, activate the appearance editor one more time. And then now we can go down to our sculpt and select a none type instead of the uh, current type. And now he's completely bald. Because what I want to do eventually is give this guy uh, sort of a comb over uh, type hair that's available from our uh, content pack here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import in that same head. So let's find this guy here. Import in the same head. And this time, I'm going to select Keep Current. So the dynamic appearance texture settings, we're going to keep the current settings right here and press OK. And because we've kept the appearance, uh, the act, uh, the appearance editor uh, dynamic settings, now we have a bald head. It's gotten rid of most of that uh, hair, so you can't really notice anything um, on the character's hair. So this is ideal. We've gotten rid of his hair texture there and the, the substance in the appearance editor, the scalp uh, settings that we set have kind of overpowered the texture for the character. All right, so now what we can do is, uh, you know, we can probably, we can go ahead and morph this further. We can morph it in all sorts of different ways. Uh, say, for example, we wanted to make him, uh, you know, fatter, or maybe even increase or decrease the amount of age on the character. Um, we can go down to our head and go to head surface normals here. We can add additional um, aging onto this character. You can see he already has, uh, you know, significant amount of uh, roughness and age on his face right there. Say, for example, we wanted to make him younger. We can, uh, we can increase this. And get an even older effect like this, so we can you know make our character even older than he uh, originally was. And uh, you can see that if we uh, take the uh, let's go back to the uh, forehead here and pick up that strength and the age there. There you go. So now he's looking really old. We made him into like some sort of 90 year old. And then we can go ahead and apply that uh, that hair. So let's go over to the hair section here. I believe uh, it's in the party fun pack. It's not very fun to have a comb over like this, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and apply that to our character. And then we can get, you know, this kind of old looking dude right here. Um, totally custom created. 
for uh, for our uh, intents and purposes here. And then if we want to take this guy into iClone, we can do so as well by just going up here to import uh, send character to iClone. And if we just uh, tab over to iClone here, now you can see there's our uh, really old looking character right there. Now one thing I wanted to mention as well is that normally before you send to iClone, what you want to do is change the output size of your, in your appearance editor, change the output size from 1024 to 2048. And the reason for that is because if I zoom in really closely, take a look at the uh, skin texture here, how it changes when I choose 2048. Yeah, you can see it becomes a little bit more detailed there. Um, the texture is a lot, uh, a lot more detailed as opposed to the uh, 1024. So generally, before you export to iClone, you should, uh, you know, use that 2048 output size and then export your character to iClone. So let's go ahead and start a new example here. What I want to do is use a female character now. So let's go ahead and start a new project. And what I'm going to do is show you how you can you know, apply makeup to your character as well. So let's go back into our Explorer folder here while we're waiting. And let's find a female character. We can choose uh, something like, um, let's see, who is the prettiest of them all? Let's choose a, a younger female here. Uh, we're going to kind of modify her uh, a little bit, the morphing and everything like that. Let's just choose this uh, female right here. Uh, we can drag that head onto our character. And we'll just uh, reset everything. We don't need to worry about the uh, appearance editor at this point. And we're just going to apply some makeup to this character. We should probably apply some clothing before we do that as well, but uh, we'll do that in just a moment here. So let's go to our clothing. Let's give her something to wear anyways. Maybe a bikini or something. All right, because we're going to turn her into uh, sort of a model, actually. All right, so let's uh, press the J key and we can focus on our character's face. So she has a pretty, uh, you know, young looking face, pretty nice looking. We can actually add some more, uh, you know, detail onto this face by going to our appearance editor one more time. And now we're going to go down to uh, apply some makeup to our character. So let's do some, uh, you know, just go to lips or blush, for example. Let's do the blush first contour type. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, I'm not really the best at makeup anyways. Uh, we'll do a skin head here and uh, change our contour type. Whoops. Our blush type can be uh, oblique. And we can change our highlight type to uh, cute highlights, a little bit a little bit of extra stuff on there. And then, uh, you know, go from blush to lips. And we can apply some uh, nice color to her lips as well by selecting all these uh, full items. And, you know, we'll have other tutorials on how you can customize the makeup uh, later on as well. But uh, for now, we're just going to do, you know, the basic makeup. We choose a uh, cat eye makeup. It looks, uh, you know, fairly heavy. Uh, cat eye eyeliner, sorry, there. And for eyeshadow, we'll do the uh, entire eye. We'll try and do something uh, smoky, like a shadowy type. Um, there we go. And just applying different uh, types of makeup here. Let's go to our base and let's increase the opacity there. We can make it a bit more shadowy there. And uh, there you go. All right, so we've uh, made up her face a little bit. So now she looks like she's uh, ready to go out for the night. Um, eyeshadow, scalp, eyebrows. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that. But what I'm going to show you now is how you can uh, modify the morphs as well. So say, for example, we wanted to give her that, you know, stereotypical uh, high cheekboned uh, model appearance. So we can just go to our morphs. For example, I can, you know, suck in her cheeks a little bit like that. Maybe just uh, raise her cheekbones slightly. And uh, we can maybe thin out her chin as well. Um, and the size of the nose is okay. If we wanted to make it a little bit larger, we could do that as well. And uh, maybe stretch these out slightly. Yeah, so you get those nice, uh, you see the contouring in addition to the morphs that we've uh, modified, create that nice uh, model appearance right there. And then we can, you know, uh, add some hair onto her as well. So uh, this, uh, let's choose a hair type that uh, hottest hairstyle has a good hair type. Long ponytail one right here. There we go. So now she's looking uh, really fancy. And if we wanted to, in addition to that, stylize this character a bit more, so like make her more uh, like a tune type appearance, we can do that by going over here to our uh, morphs and under actor. We have the uh, Toka Motion. Uh, I've downloaded the Toka Motion uh, morphs here, the stylized character morphs. Uh, this one, Alethea, for example, if we use her slider, we can, you know, make the character slightly more cartoonish. We don't want to do it too strongly, obviously, but uh, 
you know, we can use that uh, slider to you know, make her a bit more stylized and, uh, you know, those big model type eyes and we get a beautiful looking character like that. And you can, you know, use an old guy slider as well. I think this is one I custom created. If you wanted to have like a her ugly looking older cousin or something like that, you can do that as well. Add in the old guy slider and you get a result like this. Well, that's looking pretty nasty. Um, anyway, so that's how you can, you know, combine morphs, uh, combine sliders. And uh, really the, the options for customization for these characters are completely endless because you can modify the morphs in every sort of way. You can apply any one of these bases here. You can see there's like the hundreds of bases to choose from or dozens of bases, I should say, to choose from. And if I wanted to, you know, change this character to a uh, female character, a black female character, I can left click and drag this black female character's face on there. And if we want to keep that makeup, we can select uh, Keep Current. And if we don't want to import the head morph, only the texture for the head and the body, we can do so as well. So we can just take off the morph. And then we get a result like this with the uh, blacker or darker skin tone. But we still have the, uh, the same face shape and everything like that and the same hair and then we can go into our appearance editor and modify that even further but we'll just leave it at that for now so i think that's about it for this tutorial guys uh, we'll have other tutorials that may go into more detail on different ways that you can customize your characters i've already showed you some of the basics and it's really up to you to kind of explore uh more stuff using the appearance editor uh, in combination with the morphs and everything like that and in addition if we go into iclone we still have this old guy sitting here if you wanted to export any of those texture maps, you can do so in iClone by going uh, with your character selected, going to materials up here, and selecting skin and head. And then here's our diffuse, opacity, and bump maps. Um, you can export those to Photoshop just by selecting launch here, and that'll uh, load up Photoshop with your character's facial textures. So you can see there's our original diffuse map right there with the uh, complete with the whitish type hair right there. and you can modify that in various ways uh, as you wish. And also the normal map or the bump map there. You can see the results right there. That's the one that we've exported from Character Creator. And if we want, we can test out our character's uh, facial animation as well. As uh, you uh, may know, you can uh, use facial animation tools like the Face Puppet tool right here. Select this uh, dude, uh, maybe Christian profile, just something like this. So then we have uh, this angry looking, grumpy old man right here. And uh, you can have fun playing around with that. Oh, and before I leave, I also wanted to mention as well, uh, show you the ability to import into Crazy Talk 8. So uh, if we just go back to our Explorer folder right here, um, I guess click and drag any one of these heads. Um, first thing is to go to Crazy Talk 8 and make sure that you have one of these. Uh, go to Actor, the Actor tab right here under 3D Actor, uh, this 3D Actor folder right here. You want to load up one of these uh, regular looking dudes like this uh, Alberto dude right here. And once he's loaded up, then you can uh, drag in that RL head. Let's drag in, say, for example, this uh, chubby looking dude here. And again, we have those, those options that pop up. We're going to choose the default options here. And it'll import the RL head onto our character. There you go. You can see this dude right here. If we uh, press space, if we, uh, if we press space, we can just uh, get him idling and... Uh, See the results right there. Now you're not going to have as detailed of a texture on the character's face in uh, Crazy Talk 8 because we don't have those substance uh, textures, uh, those additional effects that we can add, like such as the pores and the skin pores and everything like that. Uh, if you go up here to Materials, you're going to have your basic diffuse uh, and opacity map. In this case, just a diffuse map. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. However, it's you know fully compatible with uh, the other uh, programs as well, so you can move them back and forth. Say, for example, we wanted to, uh, let's keep it in a male here. Um, take this, uh, black dude here and, and, uh, import him in. It'll import, it'll change the morph for the face so we won't have this chubby face anymore. And we'll have this fine looking character right here. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com.